How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So the Yankees lost their first game of the season on Tuesday. Ryan was out at Hudson Valley getting some good interactions with the uh, players over there and the personnel and you know having some good conversations. We're getting a lot more information on that in the coming days as he kind of sifts through all the work that he accomplished. And now we rebound and, and look at exactly what happened uh, yesterday, where the concerns are. Uh, there are some. And, and look, we're 5-1. and one. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the Yankees are a bad team because they are certainly not a bad team. But there are some things that need to get better, and I think you can always get better. We were never going to be a 162-win team. Obviously, that's ludicrous, and the Yankees were going to lose at some point. Arizona Diamondbacks are a very good club. Made it to the World Series last year for a reason. Pitching is solid. Uh, this Today is going to be another difficult matchup for the Yankees uh, squad. But at the end of the day, there are some individual key players and some metrics I do want to discuss where things could improve. But Ryan, before we dive into it, how do you do today, my friend? I'm doing great. You know, I, I mean, obviously, 162-0, and 0, the dream is dead. Uh, you know, I really thought we had a chance this year at it. You know, I, I was just really hoping for our first undefeated season in franchise history. But it'll have to wait another year. Uh, maybe 2025 will be the year. But in all seriousness, I mean, the big takeaways from, like, the first kind of six games is, first and foremost, the plate discipline's a lot better, for sure. But on the other hand, they haven't hit for power. Like, they're not doing any damage to the ball when they make contact. And that's a bad thing. Like, I, I, I don't want people to think that I'm saying that, like, they need to strike out 30 times a game and start, you know, swing at the first pitch. But, man, you get a first pitch. Like, like Stan takes a fastball down the zone for strike three. Dude, swing at it. Like, like do damage. I, I don't – I'm not sitting here and saying it's bad to work the count. But, like, if it's 0-0 and, and I get a fastball down the middle – crush that pitch like you you're your major league hitters if, if you're Aaron Judge if you're Alex Verdugo if you're Anthony Rizzo if you're any of those guys you've got to know how to do damage on the ball now I understand they don't want to swing first pitch and ground into a double play uh when a guy just works a walk that I understand but the Yankees weren't just walking a ton after that first inning yeah like Gallon's command in the first inning was not good he walked two batters but after that he walked one batter in the remaining five innings where is the situation where it's okay to take a first pitch fastball down the middle Judge was missing 92 mile prior foul fastballs over the heart of the plate like dude do damage get out in front and crush that ball a lot of these guys are late on pitches they shouldn't be late on a lot of the guys are hitting the ball in the air the other way and it's not going very far like let's let's just kind of be real here Juan Soto can do that because Juan Soto is a has a generational eye and a generational hit tool most of the guys if not like Judge can do it Stan can I don't know if Stan can do it anymore but Stan physically can do it that's six that's three guys the other six guys can't do that reliably. Like, I I'm sorry, but like Rizzo, like, dude, drive the ball to right field. Your best, you are at your best when you're hitting the ball in the air to right field. We got to get back to that. For Verdugo, look, the glove's been good, but like, same thing. Dude, drive the ball to right field. That is where you're going to do damage. You don't want to roll the ball over to, to the second base. You don't want to hit a weak fly ball to left that isn't gonna get that isn't gonna do anything for you. Uh, you know, if you're relying on defenses being sloppy and, and poor, like like just like well placed batted balls in order to win baseball games, you're gonna get run through by some really good teams in the in the league. And you might go, well, they beat the Astros doing it. Yeah, the regular season. We'll see how that works in the postseason. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's probably not going to work. You've got to be able to do damage on contact. So, you know, obviously Judge not playing well, Stanton not hitting well, Rizzo not hitting well. That's really killed them in the power department. Uh, but they've got to get themselves going on that front. I know that this is an organization that has valued power. This is not an organization that's veering away from hitting for power. Uh, they've got to find a way to kind of get their guys going on that front. And then the other concern, obviously, is Nesta Cortez. The stuff got worse than that start. Like, it was not a good start start uh, it was an, an atrocious one he, he battled after that first inning but like you're okay with those starts sandwiched in between some really good ones right like when Garrett Cole grinds through a start you're like that's why he's an ace because he doesn't have it today and he's still giving us outs when you don't have it every day you're not grinding through starts you're just not pitching well right like that's when it becomes that's when it becomes an issue Early in the year, two starts, not going to start ringing alarm bells, not going to tell you that Cortez stinks, that you got to give up on Cortez, that he's got to do this, this, and that. I see some people suggest doing an opener. You're not doing that because of two starts. I've seen some people suggest throwing in Luke Weaver. You're not throwing Luke Weaver as a starter because of two starts, right? Like, that's not happening. But, yeah, this is part of the evaluation for when, you know, Cole comes back and he feels good. He's supposed to start throwing sometime soon. There's no ex uh, specific date on a throwing program, but he'll probably need... He's going to be on the IL through uh, the end of May, if I'm not mistaken, because he was placed on the 16th day. Uh, but, yeah, like, I, I look at a guy like like Nestor Cortez and say, I don't know if he's, if he's going to stay on this rotation long term, right? 
Let's compare Heal and Cortez's starts. Would you say he, would you say Heal knew where the ball was going more than Cortez? Because I wouldn't say that. I would say Cortez and Heal both didn't know where the ball was going in those starts. And Heal threw four and two thirds inning of scoreless baseball and could have gotten that fifth inning if uh, they weren't having a pitch count for him. He was dominant. Like he looked really good. Uh, when you have really good stuff, you can say I don't know where this fastball is going, but if it's somewhere in the zone. I'm striking somebody out. I'm getting outs. Like, they're going to get underneath it. They're not going to hit it. He didn't really have his slider go. He didn't have his changeup go. He didn't get a single whiff on the changeup. And he struck out three, six batters. He basically went in there with just his fastball. So, if you're Nestor Cortez, you know your stuff is worse than Luis Heels. Your stuff is worse than Clark Schmitz. Your stuff is worse than Carlos Rodon's. Your stuff may not be dramatically worse than Marcus Stroman's, but... I view as Marcus Stroman as probably the safest bet in this rotation. He had, he threw 100 pitches in his first start. That's a great first sign that he's going to be no pitch restrictions, no inning restrictions, no build up, none of that stuff. Go out there and shove. And he's a dog. You see, he actually really grinded through that start. Errors on errors on errors, dumb defensive plays throughout the diamond, and he just shoved. He, he stuck in that game, gave you six innings, saved your bullpen. That helps you with this seven game road trip. And then I look at Rodon and say, you know, obviously pending today's start. I feel decent about him. His stuff looked really good in start one. I would like him to look a little more sound in start two. If he can give me like five or six innings, seven strikeouts, one or two earned runs, don't walk too many guys. I'm going to tell you right now, I would be like, that's Rodon. That's the vintage Rodon we saw in San Francisco and Chicago. Uh, but yeah, like right now, Alex, and I know this is a little bit of a rambly section. It's Cortez and it's the power. Those are the two things I look at and go, they got to start changing fast because... We need to get the we don't we want to get the ball rolling. We wanna we wanna be able to beat some of the really good teams in the schedule because you don't want to get buried early in your year. Absolutely. You don't want to be buried early in the year. And look, um, let's talk about Judge for a second. Because there are people I saw some dumb, oh my god, like almost brain rotting question like narratives on Twitter. Someone said we should send Judge back down to AAA. I nearly, I was almost being scraped off the pavement yeah, when I saw that freaking tweet. The ridiculous grass-sniffing mindset of that coming to fruition, it hurts. It hurts. It actually pains me. Yeah, let's send down Aaron Judge. Let's send down the best player uh, at the offensive position in the game. Yeah, he's having a couple of bad games. Everybody does. Juan Soto's going to have a couple of bad games this year. Judge will have a couple of more. Glaber will. Volpe will, who's red hot. Mookie Betts will get cold at one point. It's, it's, it's part of the game. It's part of sports. You can't avoid a cold stretch. Aaron Judge is a key component in this team, Not let, let alone the fact that he's been an excellent defender to start this season. Um, and the fact that he is there at batting third is an intimidation factor in of itself um, that goes into the equation. Now, Rizzo and Stanton, it's a whole different, equa different conversation, but mainly Stanton, who just looks like he's blind up there at times. Rizzo, I think, will get hot as he gets a little bit more at bats. You know, obviously uh, missed the second half of last year, so I'm not surprised he's struggling to open this season. Um, but Judge, it's a matter of when, not a matter of if. It's just going to take him a little time. You know, this is part of what batters go through. Some of them are red hot, like Volpe was in spring training and Juan Soto was in spring training, and they just ride right into the season. Judge was struggling a bit. He was dealing with the abdominal issue. They shut him down for a week. They shut him down for some time. And so I'm not surprised. He's He might even still be in a little bit of pain for all we know. You know what I mean? Like, he might still be fighting through that. So, you know, what is your early impression on Judge? Obviously, I'm not concerned about him whatsoever. If you think he should be sent out to AAA, I don't even know what to tell you. Yeah, so first and foremost, uh, I mean, look, I, I, I think kind of the entire, like the, the number one thing we should kind of all wrap our heads around is it's early, right? Like the same way the Yankees weren't going to win the World Series because they went 5-0 and and they swept Houston is the same way where it's like they're not bad or they're not like guys are not good or bad, have not had good or bad years yet, right? Like nobody's had a good or bad year yet. Having a good start to your year, having a bad start to your year. You're good or you have a good or bad year at the end of the year. Like we we figure that out then. Granted, there are some guys who are so bad that we kind of know early, or some guys who are so good that we kind of know early. Uh, but like you don't know who has a good or bad year yet. Like in, in entering August, Jake Barris had a 120 WRC plus. Right? Like I Anthony Rizzo through like May, was it May 31st, had like a 150 WRC plus. You don't know who's having a good or bad year until the year ends. Look at Stanton in 2022. First half all-star, you know, mashing the baseball, 138 WRC+. Plus, dude looks like a stud, falls off in the second half. 
bad year, right? I mean, it, it happens. That you got to give it time. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a of a, of a like a easy breather stat for some of the people people concerned about the power because I certainly was. The Texas Rangers slugged 382 with a 88 team WRC plus in their first eight games. That team, if you want to call them a bad offense, you know what I mean? If you want to say the Texas Rangers were a bad offense last year, you might need a little bit. And as for the Aaron Judge shut down the AAA thing, I mean, again, like I, I think it is the second time I'm doing this. Stay off the weed. Like, guys, like guys I mean, what? I feel like we're talking people off the edge on, on April 3rd with a 5 and one baseball team. You know what I mean? Like, you don't win the World Series in April. You don't win the World Series in March. It was really cool to sweep the Astros. Great feeling, flying high, all that stuff. But if you win four straight, man, at some point we're going to lose two or three. I mean, hey, we might even lose four straight. You know what I mean? That's baseball. That's life. Like that, if there's going to be ups and downs, you want to you want to feel really excited and juiced when your team wins because it's a fun feeling, right? And I get like there's the ups and downs. Like yesterday was a bad game, no doubt about it. Just an ugly, sloppy baseball game. It was gross. It was boring. It was 12 o'clock. Nobody wanted to watch that crap. I was tired and moody. I imagine everybody else watching the game was extremely tired and moody. And the game ran too long. It wasn't even like one of those quick, like, ah, you lost, but whatever. We're going to sleep at 11. You went to sleep late if you watched the game. Like, I, I get it. You're in a bad mood after the game. Completely understand. But guys, we got we to gotta, like start thinking here. Uh, and then kind of just to like get back to like talking about the team in a rational way. Um, you know, I, I, let's, let's just... The Yankees are not necessarily a team that you're going to look at and say, all right, this is a complete product right now. They don't have their ace. You look at, like, the guys you're concerned the most about are probably, like, the stains of the world because they're coming off of really bad years, and, and they've been bad for about a year and a half, and, and they're continuing to play poorly. They had a really good—he had a really good spring training. I was encouraged. I kind of need to see him get it going soon because Dominguez is going to be coming back at some point in the next month or two. And Dominguez is going to be a big addition to this team. So, you know, you start looking at some of the pieces they don't have right now, some of the pieces they could have in two months. Granted, the schedule being tough doesn't help them. Uh, but the Yankees, you know, this is an incomplete ball club, right? Like the, 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 the people you think are not good on this team may be good in two months. The people you think are great on this team may not be so good in two months, right? Like if Oswaldo Cabrera goes into like an, a one for a, one, a three for 30 slump, right? You're going to bench him. You're going to call for him to get benched. You're going to want the make you back. You're going to want Bernie to play. Like things are going to change. I just want people to understand it is a long, 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 such a long year. Uh, like, I'm looking through, like, stats of the first eight games of last year to kind of, like, look at anomalies. Travis Jankowski had, like, a 490 WRC+, plus, right? Like, uh, le who led the – Adam Duvall led the lead, had four home runs in his first seven games. Uh, Glaber Torres was the best hitter on the Yankees. Trying to look at, like, some bad hitters who were, like, who ended up having good years. Tristan Costa had a damn good year, 22 WRC+. Plus. Alex Bregman had a damn good year, 16 WRC plus, uh, just like dogs. Those are really good players. Marcus Simeon had a 40 WRC plus, and you know he had a really good year. Uh, so uh, Bellinger, 56 WRC plus, he had a 130 WRC plus that year. So you know, just give it time. Guys who are really good are gonna play well. Guys who are having good year, who are having good years to open up that aren't that good are gonna cool down. Like I, I mean, it's gonna happen, right? I mean. Stanton had a 164 WRC plus through his first eight games last year. Would you call last year a great year for John Carlos Stanton? No, right? Yes, last year was not. Garrett Mitchell had a 217. W Garrett Mitchell was one of the 15 best hitters in the league. I hope he has a good career. He seems like a good dude, but right, Matt Chapman looked like the AL MVP after April. It's a long year. Like, just let the year play out before we start doing the whole. This guy sucks. This guy's good. This guy's cooked. This guy's that. It's trending in certain ways for some guys. Cortez is trending kind of out of the rotation. But trending versus out of the rotation, two completely different things. Rangers looked like they were trending to not play so well after the second half. The Yankees looked like they were trending to play well after they went 3-2-1 and two and one and won, I think, the, the series after to open the year last year. When they were two games behind the Orioles on July 3rd and finished, like, 18 games behind them in the standings right after. You know what I mean? Like... Baseball is an evolving sport. You got to give it the whole year. Just give it the whole year. That's that's my last point. Yeah, I mean, look, baseball is a game of sample size. And using small sample sizes to justify an opinion can sometimes lead you down the wrong path. However, if you're talking about guys like Juan Soto who traditionally do it over a larger sample size, you have a little bit more ground to stand on. And, and Judge every year is very, very freaking good. So I think we can calm the nerves a little bit. And speaking of sample sizes, uh, one of the interesting 
and look, I, I, I'm going to take this with a grain of salt because I think this is primarily being dragged down because um, of Stanton and Rizzo and Judge all struggling. But the Yankees right now rank 27th in exit velocity and hard hit percentage and 30th in barrel percentage and 29th in pull rate. Are you concerned about these numbers by any means? I am not because I think that the struggles of those core, heart-of-the-order guys have dragged them down. But once we start to see them heat up, I think we're going to alleviate a lot of those concerns. These numbers will skyrocket pretty quickly. I imagine you probably agree with that. Yeah, I think, you know, over time, like, Judge is going to hit. Judge is going to go on a stretch where he's just going to crush. And then, like, Volpe's going to go cold. Like, that's... Volpe's not hitting 600 this year. Like, if Volpe hits 600, we're talking about the greatest baseball player of all time. That's not happening, right? So, um, just give it time. Guys are going to heat up. Guys are going to slow down. Are you encouraged by certain things early? Sure. Like, Volpe... Dude, this is a really encouraging start for him. This is awesome for him. If he can keep up being not these numbers, but keep up just having that approach and having this skill set, you know, he's going to have this bat pip drop because it's like 700 and, and it'll drop to like a more uh, reasonable number. But imagine like a 110 WRC plus from Anthony Volpe this year. That would be huge. That's your leadoff hitter, right? Like we, we're, we can talk about the leadoff spot. We can talk about all that stuff. If you're going to shuffle anything around the lineup, I would start considering putting Volpe at the top just because I want Glaber to get going. And I think Glaber is a lot better in the middle of the lineup. I have always been like a Glaber should lead off, kind of give him that, that run. But at this point, it just kind of seems like he just doesn't hit when he's leading off. Like, it's an extensive sample size of that. So I would start buying into that notion. There's a notion where you get enough of a sample size, you can start going, all right, let's shuffle him down a little bit. I think it also deepen the lineup, right? Like, Volpe needs to come up with bigger spots. Volpe and Cabrera for the most part, too. Like, you, it's not good that they're hitting in the bottom of the lineup while they're hot because then when, like, the, the issue becomes that um, they're not getting at bats enough, and, and that means that you're not putting out your best hitters. You have like Verdugo coming up in big high leverage situations, and look, I don't want to dog on Verdugo. I don't want to dog on anybody, but dude, he is, how many situations does he come up in where it's like, all right, you can change the game here, and he hasn't come through. Like he's grounded into double plays. Like in a sense too, like a lot of the Yankees are like selling out for contact. Dude, take your A swing. I don't care. I Owen one is better than no one on two outs. Like. I, I don't know where this notion started that like it's that like it's a good thing to just make contact for the sake of contact in counts where it's not 0-2. In 0-2, yes, you should just try to make contact because yeah, I mean, striking out is bad, right? Like that's an out. Uh but it's 0-1 or or 1-0 or or 1-1 one one or 2-0. And, oh. and dude, I'm seeing swings that are like, take your A swing. You see a fastball on the inside part of the plate, get out in front crush that baseball, drive that ball to right field or drive that ball to left field. If you're right-handed, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that like, again, this is not an, I don't think the Yankees have an approach issue. I don't think the Yankees have like a skill issue. I mean, it might be like a, they're just not like, they're maybe a little too defensive in there at bats. And that's a small thing you change and like, just, Hey guys, been a little more aggressive today, but like, yeah, like the veterans dude, they're, Rizzo, Rodugo, Rizzo, Stanton, uh, I said Rizzo twice, Judge, um, like, step up, like, come on, like, I, Torres, too, like, you, some, you gotta start hitting, guys, you know, like, it can't just be the Volpe Cabrera Wells show, you know what I mean, like, they're taking those kinds of at-bats, when Volpe's up, and he sees a pitch to crush, he's lacing a line drive to right field, he's pulling a ball down the line, when Cabrera gets a pitch he wants to hit, he pulls the ball in the air, he does damage, I, I, I'm seeing at bats from those guys where I'm like, that's mature. That's a very mature at bat. And then I'm seeing the at bats from the veterans and I'm like, what are we doing? Right? Like, like what is, what is going on? Obviously Soto, I mean, Soto's having a good year. I know he had a couple like not good games, but like, again, he was hitting, what was hitting like 700. So like he was going to slow down. Um, I, I need the at bats from the vets to get better. Cause they look rough. Like it's just, it's painfully, it's painful to watch a guy take strike three on a pitch that's down the middle. Like you're the Bronx bombers, not the Bronx. Oh, I think I could take a pitch here. You're John Carlos Stan. You hit a ball a million miles an hour. Hit the ball, right? Like I think a lot of these pitchers and Gallon noticed this later in the game. I can just throw pitches in the zone because they're not doing damage there. Pitchers who have not walked the ballpark have had a ton of success against the Yankees because they've been able to just attack the zone and the Yankees have not been aggressive enough in zone to do damage. You got to do damage. You've got to do damage. You cannot get by on just walking, walking, walking because some guy, you're not, you can't rely on that stuff. I know the zones aren't great. Judd should have had a strikeout turn into a walk. That's not cool, right? Like that sucks. 
Cortez had a strikeout taken from him because it should have been strike three and it ended up turning into a hit. That sucks. Like, that's bad. But you've got to be able to work through that. Like, why are you a 3-2 count in the first place? Because you missed two fastballs in the middle of the zone. Right? Like, I, I you, you get what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I can acknowledge bad luck, but also say there are pitches where you should not be in a spot where you're reliant on the umpire. Go do damage. That's my message to the veterans. Go do damage. You're great hitters. You all have pop. You can all do damage. You guys aren't the nine hitter who's playing because the Yankees are battered. You're Aaron Judge. You're John Carlos Stanton. You're Anthony Rizzo. You're Glaber Torres. You're Alex Verdugo. Time to start hitting like it, and let's start driving the ball. Absolutely. So I'm pretty confident, just as you are, the Yankees are going to bounce back and be just fine moving forward. But guys, always happy to hear your thoughts below in the YouTube comment section. Make sure to like and subscribe, as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Perfect.